Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. It's a new prescription for a new you, America. Why? Because this show is for you. Diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, depression, anxiety. I mean, the list goes on and on. Weight loss, obesity, with all that we're struggling with today. And we have to figure out a new way to go to the next level in our health and our life. And you can do it. You can change, but you have to be willing to. You have to want to. You have to have and find somewhere deep down the want to. To come out from where you are, change your life, and go to the next level. Let's go to Paul right now and kick it off. Hi, Paul. Hi, how are you doing? And I'm living well. What's up? Um, well, I was traveling back from Birmingham. I started listening to your show, and I find it very fascinating and stuff. Just want to share a little bit of stuff, what's going on with me, and see if you can help me out uh, to move forward. Uh, about three to four months ago, uh, working night shift, uh, ended up going into atrial fib. Um, it's uh, what the doctor says. I'm on the score of CHADS. I'm a zero. They contribute totally to uh, caffeine, and so it pretty much woke me up. Uh, when I met my wife 14 years ago, I weighed around 209 pounds. I currently weigh now at 282, and I was up over 300. And uh, like I said, it woke me up what was going on. Uh, the doctors did an echo of my heart. Uh, there's no damage or anything there. The only thing they found out on my cardiopulmonary stress test they did uh, was that uh, I had an inverted P wave. Uh, but from that point, uh, my METS was uh, like 9.8. Uh, VO2 max was uh, extremely uh, uh, high from back when I used to actually be a runner um, and playing football. But um, uh, the cholesterol was 159. My... Uh, uh, LDL was on the low end, good. Uh, also, I've had L-arginine with citrulline that's uh, got my blood pressure, you know, under control. He does not want to add me on any type of ACE inhibitors or beta blockers or anything. And the AFib, you know, um, basically he's told me to stay off the, you know, any caffeine drinks, which I haven't had a soft drink since I was 18 years old and I'm 42. And I just want to make sure, you know, I want to keep that, uh, you know, back in rhythm, and also continue to lose the weight. And also, you know, if you could uh, expand on if you uh, know about the endopat test that looks at the physiology of your endothelium. Well, the, the physiology of that test is actually very good. So the research they're doing on that is strong. I think that from an evaluation standpoint, you know, it, it can be very helpful. But at the end of the day, you're still pretty young. And it's going to come down, even though they can evaluate that and kind of rate that at some level, there's nothing better than making some radical lifestyle changes, which it sounds like you already have. And so the only thing I would really be concerned about is continuing a good set of patterns like you're doing right now. CoQ10 has got some really good research behind it. Now they're doing research on that in the upper ranges. I mean, high ranges, like 1,000 uh, milligrams to 3,000, which you don't want to do on your own. They're doing studies on that right now. They typically have ranges of about 100 to 300 that most people take on a regular basis. Doctors typically recommend that. And, you know, that has shown really, really strong cardioprotective properties. Rutin, R-U-T-I-N, has been very helpful too. But your diet really and your exercise, I mean, that's kind of old school thought, but it is so true i mean it makes such a difference for people who do and don't but as far as the test goes i mean i think it's fine if you want my opinion i mean the research on it's solid it's strong and it's you know it's it's a great evaluation tool but i think that if you're good then you know the main tissue the main issue is for prevention and for really coming up with a solid game plan your diet's gonna play a role i'll tell you a big one eating eggs every single day for your heart big big deal very important and getting plenty of those fats so you started on the fish oil which is good just make sure you're doing the oil itself and not the gel caps because that does make a big difference and getting plenty of omega-3 fats in your diet is just critical for overall cardiac health and they're finding it more and more but Weight workouts, I mean, like cardiovascular, like aerobic activity, you know, jogging and all is really good for your heart. But we've also found that high intensity weight lifting with short rest periods and short duration has had increasingly strong cardioprotective benefits. So there's a lot coming out. As, as big as heart disease is in our country right now, it's coming on super strong. So with the AFib and all, another big piece 
that they found two things. One is you always want to check the thyroid, make sure there's not something underlying. Like, for example, if the numbers are normal and you're good and the doctor says you're good, but if you checked one more layer and looked at the TPO antibodies, which the antibodies will show if there's any autoimmune process with the thyroid, see, that can be a trigger sometimes as well. And also that can mean you, you don't have... Uh, several things. One could be that you're lacking iodine. So that could be iodine's a trace mineral the body uses quite often. The thyroid you know, uses it, and we don't have it really in our diet that much at all. And then B-complex vitamins, if you're not getting enough uh, fruits and vegetables, you could be low in B vitamins, not utilizing enough of that, and low B vitamins, which the B vitamins kind of like the multivitamin of the heart. If you don't get enough, sometimes that can throw... And, and throw some, some AFib in there as well from a nutritional deficiency perspective. So there's a lot of little factors to look at. But anyway, check that out and look into some of these natural methods and keep doing what you're doing. It sounds like you've got a great game plan going just from the things you've been listening to, maybe in reading on your own, which is a cool thing, and it's a good thing you've got your doctor on board with you. 888 Lines are open. Questions about your health, always shoot me an email. Rod, you're next. How can I help? Hello. Hello, Rod. You with us? I'm with you. All right. Talk to me. What's up? Um, we have, uh, uh, I'm a kidney recipient and um, just trying to get back on the other side and get healthy and well. I'm about five months out and basically trying to, um, um, I guess, um, turn the life to, to bring it back to uh, as normal as possible. And the part that I'm having the biggest issue with is uh, the, the amount of drugs that one has to take because of this, of uh, the rejection and, and all of those things. I'm just, you know, if you talk to um, the doctors, you know, they want you on this on the rest of your life. And I'm just trying to see if there's another way of going and making this thing work. What have your doctors told you? Give me kind of their thoughts at this point. Um, I'm sorry, say that one more time. What have the doctors told you at this point? What, what, are the, what is their game plan? What have they laid out for you at this point? You know, basically, we're, we're just trying to we're just trying to get us back up and well, and 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 then uh, the and that will be on or I'll be on anti-rejection medicine for the rest of my life. Yeah, I understand. Well. There's not a lot as far as if you're looking for something like kind of silver bullet or something like that. There's not a lot that is is out there. It's more about just creating a good, solid lifestyle. My book, Empowering Your Health, has an entire program in it that lays everything out from how to eat, from, from exercise, and all of these sorts of things, which I think for you at this point, along with the rejection medication you have to take, just getting slow and steady and making these new changes in your life is going to be really one of the best foundations that you can create without going anything crazy. It's about getting steady at this point. All right, keep me posted. Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Asa telling you to just breathe with Livo2. Livo2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to Livo2.com. That's Livo2.com. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. This is the show where your health is your greatest wealth. Remember that you matter. Your health matters. And no one else can take responsibility for your health but you. You are the only one. And as many times as we try to think that we can let other people do it or we can just kind of sit back and let things happen, we have to realize that our health is valuable, and we have to step up. No one can change it. Your wife, your husband, your kids, your family members, your coworkers, no one can make you lose 15 pounds but you. You know that? No one can take the fried chicken leg out of your mouth but you. No one can put the alcohol down but you. No one can put the french fries down but you. No one can put the popsicles down but you. No one can put the cookies down 
but you. No one can get their butt out of bed and go to the gym in the morning or go walking, but you. The dog can't even get you out. You have to get you moving and making it happen. Now, we can encourage you. We can talk to you. I can rant and rave at you. But ultimately, you have to be the one to step up and say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I don't want to live like this anymore. And I want to drop the weight. I want to live better. I don't want to be taking a million medicines because I'm too lazy to make lifestyle changes. You have to change. And if you're willing to change, that's where the victory, the real victory, will come. 888 lines are open. Questions about your health? You get stuck? We're here to help. That's what this show is all about. You know, obesity is linked to poor mental skills. Now, of course, obesity seems to be linked to everything. It's almost like you just gosh, drop the weight and be healthy. I mean, it's like every other. It's like all these articles that I read. It's unbelievable how much obesity is linked to it. But it's associated with reduced memory and thinking skills in adults aged to 60 to 70, especially those with greater amounts of abdominal fat, according to a new study. The study included 250 people aged 60 and older who underwent various measurements of their body fat and test of thinking skills. The researchers found that a high body mass index was associated with increased risk of poor cognitive performance in people aged 60 to 70. The BMI uses a person's height and weight to estimate the amount of body fat. And in general, a higher BMI means more body fat. The study also found that with the highest level of abdominal fat tended to have worse thinking skills than those with the least amount of abdominal fat. So what's the bottom line? Drop the weight, lose the spare tire, and you won't go into dementia and Alzheimer's, or your risk will be substantially less than if you did carry on a big gut and hoping that, you know, just hoping for the best. You want to live in the best place that you can, and that's what we want to help you do on this show. 888 Lines are open. Check me out online and also our preferred wellness providers, health care providers in your area. The whole network of them we're building all around the great country that we have to help you with all this natural-based care that you love and you're looking for. Judy, you're with us next on the show, darling. How can I help? Hi, um, my doctor diagnosed me with osteoporosis, and he wanted to put me on Forteo for two years and then Fosamax. Um, I found a doctor that um, will work with me with natural things, and she wants to put me on uh, strontium, progesterone, calcium citrate, and microcrystalline calcium, and good vitamins. And I also take uh, flaxseed oil. Um, I'm taking more D now and the omega-3 oil. Okay. Um, my my regular doctor um, is just not very happy with me, not wanting to go on the Forte. I just wanted, um, I guess, some encouragement from you. Um, uh, maybe, do you know, studies that show that you can build bone naturally. I'm just starting on this journey. And also, I'm going on an alkaline diet. Well, that's good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Strontium actually has some really good research behind it in the natural world. So, I mean, it sounds like the regimen that they're putting you on is is solid. I'm not a big flaxseed oil fan. Okay. Definitely a bigger fan because it plays around with the estrogen levels too much, and especially on females. So okay. you know, not to come against and say anything that what they're doing is wrong, but what I'm no, saying. No, I, I was on that myself. Okay, they didn't put me on that. Okay, that was that was something I was doing on my own. The omega three oils. With I was taking omega three with D three, the fish oil. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I mean that's fine, uh, but I think that the the biggest thing is with omega three fish oils, even just a tablespoon a day for the average adults fine. High in the DHA, I like cod liver oil. I like it because it's got omega threes, but it's also got vitamin A and vitamin D. D three though, typically, even though it comes in the cod liver oil, you want to check your D levels out. What have your numbers been running? Do they check it? Yeah, I don't have it in front of me. It is a little low, and I'm going to go see my nat- the the doctor that's dealing with me naturally on Monday. So, um, I guess I'm, I'm I'm just having a little hard time dealing with my doctor trying to balance this out. Um, and I didn't want to go on for tail. Um, I'm I'm just I don't know. I'm just I guess I'm looking for encouragement. I want to do this natural for a year, 
and do strengthening exercises, weight-bearing exercises, and I was just wondering if you had some guidance from your end. Yeah, I think, well, one thing for sure in this, if you want to do, kind of make some lifestyle changes, one of the big keys is keep everything balanced in your diet. That's very important, first and foremost, because you want to make sure that you don't want to start getting off on just, you know, just tangents like high protein or low protein or high fat, low fat. It's really good to keep it balanced. Now, exercise, weight-bearing exercise, don't do... I'm not a big fan of long workouts. I think that you can get just as much done in a shorter period of time and get lasting benefits. So with that said, in my book, I've got a lot of different workouts that I lay out in there that are shorter and easier to follow. They're great for building bone density. They're great for stimulating the endocrine system, which is your hormone system. And that does it all from a natural perspective. So that might be something that would be helpful. The big thing is know that your body can change. And realize that the work and the effort you're putting into this is really going to pay off. You just have to stay committed and don't get discouraged. You know that you can go to the next level. And every day that goes by, you're getting closer to your goal. And it is a marathon. People think health is a sprint. It's not. When you go the natural route, it's a marathon. you got to stay the course. So we're here for you each and every night. Let me know how you need us. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. Welcome back to the show. Check us out online. This is the show where your health is your greatest wealth. Teresa, let's kick the segment off with you. Hi, Teresa. Hi, I'm calling about my son's hay fever. Okay. He has horrible seasonal allergies, Mm -hmm. and he's on antihistamines and probiotics and omega-3 oils, and we've tried a chiropractor. We've tried just about everything I can think of, and they're not getting any better. Okay, is and what is his age? Twenty two. Twenty two. All right. Well, is it is it one of those deals where his eyes itch all the time and water and is he having just all kinds of reactions to it? Yeah, he gets black eyes from it. Does he really? Okay. What's his diet look like? Has he modified that at all? He's he's really into fitness and he eats a really good diet. Lots of fruits, lots of vegetables. Lean protein. Yeah, but does he drink milk? No. Not at all? Very occasionally with cereal. So he eats cereal? He does. Okay. So he's eating it every day? Uh, probably five out of seven days. That's pretty much every day. When, when you do grains and you have a real hard time with allergies, any kind of grains like pasta, bread, crackers, cereal, they really, the the wheat grain and the gluten really is a big trigger for histamine in the body. And so when the body has a hard time already, maybe breaking down protein. So if he's into fitness, he, he's eating you know, quite a bit of protein. He's not taking any proteolytic enzymes or any extra enzymes. I know you said he's taking probiotics and all, but proteolytic enzymes are a little bit different than even the regular digestive enzymes. Those are more to help support the pancreas as well. The proteolytic enzymes help break proteins down a little bit better. And the proteolytics, that you take them away from meals. And so you can get that, of course, health food stores and all that. But they are very, very helpful at cutting down allergies. Another thing that's really great we've seen for seasonal allergies, cutting out dairy, which you said that he just has it with milk. So he's having dairy every day if he's eating cereal every day. Now, what are some options? Well, it, it'd be better instead of like a bowl of cereal for breakfast, to have you know several eggs and two or three organic eggs cooked in coconut oil or butter, and a good bowl of fresh fruit of some kind, like berries or or whatnot. Maybe some vegetables at, at some level, but like toast and and bread and crackers and or, or cereal in the morning. 
bagels and all that kind of thing, definitely not going to help him during the allergy season. Because if you already have a, a tendency toward allergies and hay fever, it's not going to help much when you're eating foods that produce more histamine in the body. The more histamine you produce, the more you're going to react to what's in the air, the pollen, the ragweed, all of that sort of thing. So one affects the other. So it's important to have a good baseline to make sure that, well, you know, that you're not reacting to everything. So there are some things like proteolytic enzymes, eating raw honey every day. So wherever you live, you want to go get local honey and actually start eating there just right off the spoon one or one or two times a day can be really helpful. Works almost like the concept of a homeopathic where the the Samuel Hahnemann created a, a system for homeopathy years and years ago where it was based on like cured like. And it's very similar to the vaccine concept. And it, but it does, it works. And so eating raw honey from the typical area introduces those pollens and, and those sorts of things to the body. And so the body can build a resistance to it. And that can be really helpful. So a couple things to think about along the way. I know that it's frustrating. I know it's difficult. There's some great things out there for symptom relief, eye drops and and those kind of things. But really when you get to the root cause of it, a lot of times it comes down to the diet and the body reacting to what you're constantly putting in. It's not just you randomly have allergies. Matter, matter of fact, typically he has that response year round of not breaking the proteins down. It's just in the fall and the spring when things begin to bloom, there's more allergens in the air. And that's when it can affect him the most. So look into some of those and, and keep me posted on how it goes. But, yeah, completely cutting out. And just so you know, it takes about seven and a half weeks for gluten to come completely out of the system. So it won't happen in two or three days. It takes a little while. So, And it might be a habit that he wants to get into of cutting gluten and grains out of the diet because of the way that it will make you feel overall, not just – during the allergy season, okay? Hope that helps. 888-283-7272. Lines are open. Questions about your health? Let's go to Will. Hi, Will. Welcome to the show. Hello. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I wonder if you could help me find the right fiber supplement to help with my bowel function. And if you have time, I have a problem with recurrent acute sinusitis. So you got an issue with your bowels, but you want to know about your sinus issues? Well, two things there. There are two different things if you have time with that, too. But I need to know. I, I tried the uh, psyllium husk for uh, fiber, and I think it would work, except that it causes me blood sugar problems. The, the carbohydrate in that uh, causes me blood sugar problems. So I'm... Uh, Currently trying some arabinoglactin, but I'm not sure about the uh, effectiveness of it and whether you think that's a good one or not. I'm just looking for a, a good fiber uh, supplement, as I think is what I need, because I get quite a bit of fiber in my diet, I think. How many times a day are you eliminating? Well, uh, it, it can vary. I mean, it, it can be once or twice. Well, a couple things. First and foremost, for the digestive tract to work well, I don't know that, that taking just a fiber powder is the most important thing. I like to get it from, you know, obviously your food supply as much as you can. So getting 30 or 40 grams of fiber a day is helpful. But if you've got to do it from a powder form or you need that to help you, there's a really good product that we always use and it's from Lifestyle Research. It's called Cleanse Balance, and it just works very well. People that, that struggle with elimination issues, it really helps clean out the GI tract. But a, a real big deal, whether it's digestive tract or anything else, is, are the, is the nervous system, making sure the nervous system is working properly because you can take all the nutrients in the world, but if you're not getting your nervous system to work properly. For example, the nerves that come out of the mid lower back that actually go into the digestive tract, create it and map it work properly. So you've got those three aspects of the health triangle. You've got the mental side, which is your brain chemistry and your neurotransmitters. You've got the chemical side, which is your body physiology and any nutritional deficiencies, kind of like we're talking about now. 
And then you got the structural side, which is 33, 40% of the whole equation, your bones, your muscles, and your nerves. If the nerves don't work right, whatever organ system they go to, then the organ system is not going to work at peak capacity. And that's why it's so important to make sure that you're going to a chiropractic physician or osteopathic physician, someone that can work with you on the nervous system because making sure that your glands are healthy, making sure not just that your spine's healthy, digestive issues is, you know, once you get the probiotics and you're eating healthy foods and you're doing the right kind of things, it really comes down to how's the body functioning as a whole? What's the snapshot look like? And where do you go from there? And then you have someone that can walk with you along the way. So that's kind of my two cents on it. The fiber powders, they're okay. I mean, can they be a, a quick jump start? Yeah, they can. But it's really more about getting your body kind of reprogrammed as a whole and getting it to kind of go to the next level. That's where you want to be when it comes to anything digestive related. Triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Lines are open with questions about your health. You can also go online. Shoot me an email. Chris from Los Angeles actually writes, I've been struggling with losing my temper easily. My wife and actually my kids get on my nerves when normally they wouldn't, and people at my job are causing my temper to be short. Well, (laughs) I can make a bunch of jokes about that, but I won't. You know, if you get short-tempered like that, typically, and with guys, this happens a ton. It's usually dopamine levels. Dopamine is that brain chemical. It's that feel-good brain chemical. But, buddy, if it gets low, I mean, you can get you can be one cranky dude. I'm serious. It will make you where you are not fun to be around, not happy to be around, and can just wreak havoc on people around you. So what do you do? One is from a nutritional perspective for dopamine levels, there's been good research out there on all the protein-rich foods like red meats that's organic and grass-fed. There's, of course, chicken and, and turkey. And also fish, all the fish are extremely important for dopamine levels and getting those levels up. Fish oil, omega-3 fats, of course, that's your ace in the hole. But also phosphatidylcholine can be helpful. And also tyrosine phenylalanine. We talked about that before, but supporting those will support dopamine levels, which is going to make you feel better. It's going to make you function better. It's really going to make you go to the next level. begins to subside little things don't put you on edge anymore and actually you're fun to be around and people tell you that (laughs) so i hope that helps oh and also it brings your testosterone level up brings other things up with it which everything ought to be working in good proper order 888-283-7272 lines are open questions about your health 80 percent of the health challenges we face today are diet and lifestyle related what does that mean mean somehow some way We've lifestyled our way into getting sick. But the good news is, if you can lifestyle your way into getting sick, many times you can lifestyle your way out and get well, stay well, and live well. We'll be right back. Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Rasa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888 Welcome back to the show. This is a show where your health is your greatest wealth. Let's kick it off with Vivian. Hi, Vivian. Hi. How can I help, darling? Um, well, I have multiple sclerosis, and I also have uh, psoriasis. And okay. they have me on Copaxone for the multiple sclerosis, and they have me on uh, prednisone for the psoriasis. But prednisone is an anti-inflammatory. So what can I do with my diet so that maybe I could get off the prednisone? 
Well, it's a challenge. I mean, obviously there are things you can do. You can't just drop a cold turkey, obviously. But Right. Yeah, right. But coming up with a good game plan, I mean, what are you eating now? Are you eating healthy or do you not really know how and you're looking how to? Well, I was raised a vegetarian um, and I married a meat eater. And so, you know, things. How'd that whole thing work out for you? Downhill. (laughs) (laughs) So I, I like the way you can always go back to what you know. So going back to a vegetarian is not an issue at all. Um, I know that the because I was raised in the Catholic in the Seventh Day Adventist Church that you know they have their own health reform and their own products and this that and the other, like Loma Linda and Worthington and everything like that. But it has a lot of salt and a lot of fat in it. So right. I learned how to make the vegetarian meat from just gluten. But I've heard on your radio that gluten may be a problem with inflammation. Could you it's a huge elaborate issue. on that? Yeah, it's a huge issue with inflammation. It, it, it does a lot of things in the body. It really disrupts the digestive tract. It can cause issues within brain chemistry. It crosses the blood-brain barrier and can cause issues like, or contribute to issues like ADHD, depression, anxiety, those sorts of things. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan with that. With MS... There, there's a lot you can do naturally. And if you had, is the how? Where are you? At what level are you right now with it? I'm in a repulse remission, but I've just gone through my second uh, round in three years of uh, cyclophosphamide chemo because okay. I was I lost the ability to walk and everything like that. So they did the cyclophosphamide chemo, which does good because the last time I had it three years ago, I was able to start walking. I was able to go back to work. I was able to do all these things. So I decided to do the chemo again, and it's doing me good. Now I'm in physical therapy. Okay. Well, that's great. So Mm -hmm. you just need, you just want to come up with some new lifestyle choices that can help cut down on some of the inflammation and and really help things potentially regenerate at some level. Right. Well, with, with MS, a couple things. things, one thing we know, and literally this is pretty interesting, the galactose milk sugar, which is a sugar found in most milk, but especially goat's milk is one of the key ingredients in the body for making and regenerating myelin. So, you know, the myelin sheath is a protective coating around the nerve itself. And in MS, that breaks down. Well, the the myelin actually itself is produced by galactose. And so by getting enough of that, increasing that in the body, you can help repair and regenerate the myelin many times. So you can't just stop it because of the process and what it is, but you can you can help the body and support the body and that's one of the natural ways that we've learned that can do that of course all your omega-3 fats and lowering inflammation by what you eat that's critical i know you may not be big on the meat side but you definitely 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 don't want to be big on the carbohydrate side that is a nightmare and so with ms the last thing you want to do is be hitting a lot of carbs you want to be really careful with that Proteins are really important, getting plenty of lean quality proteins, chicken, fish. Uh, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of fish and eggs. So if you stick with that and you don't, you don't really have to worry too much about the others, if you don't stay away from red meat, that's fine. But I'm a big fan of at least fish and eggs for good lean quality proteins. Fruits and vegetables for the most part, for your carbohydrate sources, and then your healthy fats, almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados, the whole nine yards. All of those are beneficial and they're critical. So I think that it's just about getting balanced. It's about keeping a good regimen. It's about putting the right things in, getting, you know, supplements are fine. B6, uh, pyridoxamine, all those can be beneficial with any kind of nerve-related issue. Vitamin D can be good too. You want to make make sure your numbers are elevated and at a good range. 
But those are some of the key factors that you really want to look into. And I wouldn't really go overboard, you know, make sure you're following everything your doctor's telling you. But with MS, it's it's just about steady and it's about keeping the inflammation down, eating the right kind of foods on a regular basis. And I mean, some of the little things we talked about there, the research is good behind it. I mean, that little goat milk tip is something that we learned, that I learned years ago in some of my medical training, and, and it's been phenomenal. And it's been very helpful to a lot of people because nutrition can play a big role. I would look into Weston A. Price and look into all their research that they've done because they've got some really good research as far as what you're talking about and just an overall good game plan. That can be really helpful. So I hope that helps. And and your journey through this, any way we can be of assistance, we'll be glad to. All right. 888 is the phone number that puts another hour in the charts. Go tell one person something you learned on this show. And together, we can change the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Or we're diagnosing hope one person at a time. You can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over. But check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.